Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining this quick bite. Today, I'm going to talk about open telemetry and how to incorporate it with Datadog and the reasons to why should we in the first place. But before I tackle that, let me introduce myself. I'm Stomer Friedman. I'm a tech lead at Monday.com. I am really passionate about building systems that scale. And lately, I've been focusing more on how to build great observable systems, which is one of the reasons that I'm here. When I'm not doing that, you'll probably see me hiking somewhere or traveling. And the next uh, trip is going to be to New York, to the Dash conference. I hope to see everyone there. Should you have any questions regarding this presentation or anything, please reach out to me. I'm always happy to meet and speak to new people. So let's begin. But before we're touching the open telemetry part, let me try by examining the stack we need today in order to start sending um, telemetry data before the open telemetry era. So we have a microservice and we want to start observing its behavior. We want to make sure that it's alive and healthy. Usually we are choosing a vendor and this vendor is going to supply us with some SDK or a library that we will need to inject to our microservice. We're going ahead and doing that. And this SDK is going to do its magic and instrument our application and collect these different telemetries and with the different technology that we're using, if it's database or um, some web server and sending those telemetry directly into the vendor's agent, which is another component. This component is usually hosted inside our um, environment and is going to get all of those different telemetry kinds traces, metrics, sometimes logs, and in the specific vendor's protocol, then it's going to ingest it, process it, maybe apply some costume logic that the vendor chose and send it directly into the vendor backend for saving the data. Then we as a users can log into the vendor's platform, query the data, build a dashboard and create some alerts that we want. Great, but let me try to challenge this approach a little bit. If we're thinking about the downsides of this architecture, we are seeing that we are re heavily relying on different components of a specific vendor in order to build our observable system. We have the SDK inside our application code. That means that we are instrumenting our application using a specific SDK um, interfaces. We have the agent, which is another component that is hosted inside our environment but it's actually a product of this specific vendor, which speaks at a specific protocol that the vendor chose. And this can lead down the road to a situation that is called a vendor lock-in. So the easiest way to explain what a lock-in is, is to imagine a phase in the future when you would want to migrate from one vendor to another, to replace one vendor to another. Just think about it. How easy it's going to be? You would need to change all of your application code to another vendor, change the, the agent in your infrastructure to work um, with, another, um, with another vendor. And sometimes it can be very tricky, especially if you're a big company and consisting in a lot of microservices and a lot of developers. This can be that hard that sometimes companies just decide to not do that and stay with the current vendor just because it's a very um, not trivial task to do. This is why it's called the lock-in of a specific vendor. But even if you don't want to leave your current vendor, you want to stay with it, you're happy with this, but you want to have more tools on board to do some specific jobs. For example, for APM, application monitoring, you're using vendor A, but for traces, you want to use another vendor because it's specialized on it. That's fine, you're taking this vendor SDK and implement it and injecting it to your microservice. But wait, this APM is going to collect some data and the other vendor is going to collect the same data, but in another way. So that means that you're going to collect pretty much the same data twice, which is going to result in high CPU, maybe high memory. But even if you're fine with this, sometimes and very often, it can be that those two different vendors are colliding with each other and they're conflicting and they cannot live side by side, which is a very limiting factor. And the second um, downside is that we are not using a standard way. We are we're using a very specific way to collect traces, to collect metrics, to collect um, logs from different vendors. 
This means that, for example, if you want to correlate between traces and metrics, inject some trace um, identifiers inside the metrics, you will need to un really understand the specific protocol of this specific vendor in order to do this. In order to do this, usually what company did is define different exporters that translate between those different protocols. This is very messy work to do. Even if you're using the same vendor in all of those signals with a specific protocol, it can be tricky to, um, to work um, to understand this specific protocol and to customize it. And third, and the most important one, is sometimes you want to control the data. When you're using a specific SDK of some vendor, you have a limited control over your data. If you want to apply some costume logic, it's going to uh, sometimes be very hard. Maybe you want to apply some policies. This could be very limiting. So we understood the downsides of using the, uh, the architecture. What can we do about us? And in this manner, I'm going to welcome you to open telemetry. And open telemetry is like saying hi to standards and conventions. Open telemetry offers us a standard way to how should we collect those different telemetry data. If we're speaking about the what, we're speaking about those different pillars of observability, those different signals, and how should we collect them? How should we treat traces? What attribute should we collect when we're dealing with logs? How should we collect those different metrics and report them? And every all of those signals are under one umbrella. But not only that, open telemetry gives us a way to handle those different telemetries from the application level, how could should we generate and emit them, and from the collector level, how do we collect, process, and eventually export them to any vendor that we choose. And the most important stuff here is that we are collecting those telemetries regardless of what vendor that we work with. We can send those telemetry to any vendor that we want, and we are not relying on our architecture on a specific vendor. Open telemetry gained very, um, it's very popular um, in the recent years. And if, as you can see here, it's under the CNCF, the same organization uh, that took Kubernetes as it's the second most active project. So you could feel the traction and get a hint of what the future brings us, which is amazing. So let's understand what exactly OpenTelemetry gives us. And let's look at the component that we would need to implement in order to start using OpenTelemetry. So if we have uh, two microservices, for example, that are communicating with each other, OpenTelemetry gives us an SDK to implement and inject to our microservices. Um, it's pretty related to the one that we talked before, only now it's vendor neutral. So it doesn't know of any vendor, it just, knows how to collect those telemetry data. It's going to instrument our application, handle the propagation between service to service, and only then export it to another open telemetry um, component that is called the open telemetry collector. The open telemetry collector, it's like a service that is hosted inside your environment. It's uh, really pretty much um, the same as the agent that we talked before uh, of the specific vendor, but again, vendor neutral. And then there you can apply any logic that you would want. You can process the uh, different signals of those telemetries, maybe correlate between them. And only then you decide to what vendors do you want to export this data. And as you can see here, you can export the same telemetry data to as many vendors that you want. For example, you can decide to send traces to Datadog, send metrics to Prometheus and logs to another vendor. Okay, so we understood different components OpenTelemetry gave us. Let's see what Datadog has to offer us in order to how, how should we work with OpenTelemetry with Datadog. So sending traces um, to Datadog, it's the same like sending metrics. We are going to implement the SDK inside our microservice. This SDK is going to communicate with two different uh, components that we can choose from. One of them is the open telemetry collector. We can go full blown, create the open telemetry collector on our environment. 
and only then export the traces, the metrics, and soon to be supported, hopefully, logs uh, directly into Datadog. Um, but if you don't want to do that, open uh, Datadog just offered us a way to support, to ingest OTLP directly in the agent. So we can send those traces and metrics directly from the OTL SDK um, to the agent and the agent directly transfer them into the Datadog um, backend. Um, the pros and cons are pretty clear here. Clear, pretty clear here. here. Um, if you want to go to the collector, that's fine. You will have the full flexibility on how to collect those different telemetries. Um, but sometimes you will lack specific feature that the agent offers. Um, so you can send them directly to the agent and um, it's pretty much the middle ground between going full blown with open telemetry to going um, fully on the vendor um, choice. So let's get practical here. The first thing that we need to do in order to start sending those telemetries is already find the collector or configure the agent to work with the OTLP ingest. Here's a little snippet on how to configure the OTLP ingest in the agent. Just practically saying the agent that you want to work with open telemetry. Then we are going to implement all the less decay inside the application and send it directly to the exporter uh, just after you customize it to any of your needs. Okay, I hope you understood a little bit of what is open telemetry and what you need to do. Let's see some code in order to start understanding even further how to do that. Okay, so let's, this is an example of how to use open telemetry inside the code to start sending those traces and metrics. Um, to Datadog. Here is we are specifically um, talking about uh, traces, but metrics is pretty much the same. We have here the tracer that it's inside our microservice. And inside the tracer, we are going to configure how do we want to send those traces directly um, to the agent or to the collector. I put it a little bit example of how can we customize it just to give you a clear sense of what we can do here. So as you can see, we have an initializer function that is getting the service name. We would see its usage uh, soon. The first thing that we're going to do, we are going to define the collector exporter. Here you can see that we are using an OTLP trace exporter, which means that we are exporting the traces in an open telemetry format. We are sending this directly into a specific URL. This can be um, the open telemetry collector or the agent uh, of Datadog. After that, we are going to decide how do we want to process those different spans. Here you see that we customized it a little bit and we chose to use the batch span processor, which basically means that we are going to send those spans in batches with specific configuration that we can decide to use. And then we decided to use a costume sampler. Um, we will see soon the implementation, but that means that sometimes we don't want to send all of the traces um, to Datadog. We can decide here what traces do we want to send and what not with our logic. This is just fine. And we are going to register a specific instrumentation. Here you can see that we use the node automatic instrumentation that OpenTelemetry offers us. It essentially means that we are going to capture all of the technologies that OpenTelemetry supports in order to end, um, instrument our application. We don't need to explicitly say that we are using a specific database, Postgres, MySQL, and so on. This is automatically captured. And after that, we are going to say some details about our service. What is the service name, for example? And as you can see here, OpenTelemetry gives us a way, a standard way to define those different attributes. Here, for example, we're using the semantic resource attributes dot service name, which obviously means the name of the service, but we can use much more. For example, we can say here um, the container ID for using Kubernetes or the process ID or the Kubernetes deployment and so on. And this will be represented as trace tags inside the Datadog Trace Explorer, which is pretty great because it gives us conventions to how to use those different uh, attributes. And you would see that for every technology, there are different semantic uh, attributes that OpenTelemetry uses. And this gives a standard way 
to how to treat those different data. We are registering everything and we are returning the tracer for the usage of our application. As you can see, we defined here a very simple um, uh, application written in TypeScript uh, with Express. Um, it's going to implement some endpoints. Um, and this endpoint is going to be automatically captured by the automatic instrumentation we saw before. But I decided to show you some method of manually instrumenting the application if you wanted to. So for example, here we captured the user ID and then we decided to start a new span under the trace. That means that we are starting some meaningful operation. Under that, we are going to set some attributes, for example, the user ID, and then we are going to close the span. This means that this span is going to be under this trace and there is going to be an attribute on them. If there is going to be an exception, we want to record it and send it to Datadog. So we are going to record the exception and send it directly. Now I want to give you some example of how we can customize it even further. For example, we talked about the sampler. Let's talk about it a little bit. If we want to decide what kind of traces do we want to send based on some logic. So we can see we defined a specific sampler that open telemetry gives us an opportunity to implement a base sampler and that we can override and specify any logic that we want. And here, for example, we said that if the span has an attribute of user.paying, only then we want to record um, and send those um, uh, spans um, to Datadog. If not, we're going to avoid it and ignore it. And the sky is the limit here. We can specify any logic that we want. And if we don't want to implement some custom samplers, OpenTelemetry gives us a lot of different samplers um, to use. Another example that I put here, let's say that we have a technology in the company that OpenTelemetry doesn't support. OpenTelemetry gives us a very clear um, instrumentation, uh, base instrumentation that we can override to implement um, the uh, instrumentation of this specific um, service. As you can see here, we have a costume technology uh, instrumentation that is going to extend some base class. And here we are going to implement how do we want to um, to instrument this specific um, service. And this gives you a fully control of all over how your service is instrumented. So it's really, um, you can do a lot of stuff here. And as you can see here, there is no reference to Datadog or any other vendor. Um, so it's pretty uh, free of all um, vendor uh, choices, which is why this is so strong. And after, I hope I gave you a little sense of what OpenTelemetry can give us, Let's talk about trade-off. So as you could have seen, OpenTelemetry gives us a lot of um, flexibility and a lot of control over the data. But the real truth is that, you know, there is a trade-off that we have to understand. And, you know, it's pretty much uh, depends on what phase your company is at right now. So if you're going full-blown with OpenTelemetry, you're going to gain a lot of flexibility, a lot of control over your data. But sometimes you would need to work a little bit harder to get the same feature that the vendor SDK supports. If you're going the other way around and going with um, the vendor choice, you would get a lot of features out of the box, but sometimes you would need some flexibility and some control that you just... Um, cannot gain in this approach as we saw earlier. So it's pretty much um, a trade-off between these two. And it really depends on what, on what stage your company is at right now. If you're a big company and would like to invest in your observability architecture, open telemetry is really the way to go. But if you're a small one and you just want to get um, a lot of features out of the box, that's something, that's something to think about. Um, so I hope I give you a clear sense of what is open telemetry and what it gives you. And again, if you have any questions regarding anything, just reach out to me. And uh, thank you very much. I hope to see everyone soon. Bye-bye.